I'm going to tell you how much money you may get for your car accident settlement. We're going to look at different injuries, different types of accidents, and lots more. Let's get started. I'm Florida car accident lawyer Justin Ziegler. The Insurance Research Council recently said that the average payout in most car accident cases is $18,417. There's two things to note with this $18,417 payout. Number one, it applies to private passenger auto accidents. That's basically where Joe Smith purchases an auto policy for his personal use. It's not for a large corporation that's purchasing a business automobile insurance policy. Number two, this $18,417 payout figure includes the expenses of the insurance company, such as if they were to hire an investigator to go out to the scene or if they were going to hire someone to download the event data recorder. So in actuality, the average payout, according to the Insurance Research Council, is going to be a little bit less than $18,417 because they need to factor in these other expenses. When I think about how much money someone may get in a car accident settlement, the first thing I think about is how badly they are hurt. Larger injuries often result in larger payouts. Let me explain. Most cases where the only injury is whiplash or lower back pain typically result in settlements of less than $25,000. That's based on my experience of settling hundreds of personal injury cases. You're most likely to get closest to the $25,000 settlement figure if you have whiplash or lower back pain if the cars were damaged very badly, you took an ambulance to the hospital, and you consistently treated for your neck or back pain. Generally speaking, insurance companies pay a lot more money if you received consistent treatment for your neck or back pain. Also, for whiplash or lower back pain, you're most likely to get closest to that $25,000 figure if you're dealing with a decent insurance company. Geico can be hit or miss, but let's say you're dealing with Nationwide, Hartford, Hanover, a good insurance company like those, you're much more likely to get closer to the $25,000 mark. In this photo here, you can see my client Caesar. We settled his whiplash case for $25,000. Now, he did not have an MRI in his case, and if you don't have an MRI, you're pretty much limiting the ceiling, the top amount on how much money you can get for your car accident settlement. Now, the things that Caesar had going for him in his case was he took an ambulance to the hospital, the airbags deployed in his vehicle, and his vehicle was smashed very badly. I often get called by people who are in a car accident, and they either call me from the accident scene or shortly after, and they haven't even received any medical treatment, and they want to know how much their case is worth. I think to myself, you haven't even received medical treatment, so at this point, their case is basically worthless. In a state like Florida where I practice, the insurance company only has to pay you in most car accident cases if a doctor says your injury is permanent. So one visit to the hospital with complaints of neck pain or back pain is not going to meet that permanent injury requirement. Neither is one visit to the hospital and a few other follow-up visits with the doctor. Insurance companies want to see consistent medical treatment for neck or back pain in order to justify a decent payout for pain and suffering. I looked at my largest 20 car accident settlements and I noticed something interesting. 75% of those car accident victims had surgery in cases where the settlement was $100,000 or more. In 25% of the cases that settled for $100,000 or more, my clients did not have surgery. So my conclusion is that there's a 75% chance that you'll need surgery after a car accident in order to get a payout of $100,000 or more. Later, we're going to look at some other factors and you'll see that even if you have surgery, you may not get a $100,000 settlement or more. Here's another interesting statistic. I estimate that there's a 59% chance that you need a broken bone in order to get a payout of $50,000 or more. I arrived at the 59% chance by looking at my largest 32 car accident settlements. In 59% of those cases, my client had a broken bone. Can you get a payout of larger than $50,000 if you don't have a broken bone? Yes, it's possible. However, you'll likely need a herniated disc and getting hit by a drunk driver, a brain injury, a herniated disc and several people competing for a limited amount of insurance coverage, two tears on different ligaments or tendons, an eye injury, or a herniated disc and radiofrequency ablation procedure. Now, those aren't the only injuries where you may be able to get more than $50,000 without a broken bone. However, from my experience, those are the most common ones. Another factor that affects whether you'll be able to get a payout for your car accident settlement is whether someone other than you is at fault. If you're the only one at fault in a car accident, you will not get one cent. Now, if someone else is at fault, that changes things drastically. So when we look at some of my largest settlements, if my client was 100% at fault, he would get nothing. 
In Florida, you can be 51% or more at fault and still receive a payout. However, your payout is going to be reduced in proportion to your percentage at fault. Meaning, if you're 90% at fault, you're only going to receive 10% of the full value of your case. If the other driver is only 10% at fault, he or she only owes you 10% of the full value of your case. So fault is a major factor in a car accident case. If we look at my car accident settlement for $300,000 involving Ryan who broke his leg when another oncoming driver made a left hand turn and hit him, had Ryan been in the other vehicle, his settlement would have been zero. That's because he would have been 100% at fault. One thing that may help you prove fault is if you hire an expert to download the event data recorder in the car that caused your crash. You can hire an expert. Some of them charge around $500 or more depending on the make and model of the vehicle. But what they're going to do is download this event data recorder that can capture how fast the other driver was going at the time of the crash. Let me give you an example of how important the event data recorder can be. It's particularly important in cases where you are the driver who's making a left-hand turn at an intersection, so you do not have the right of way, and the other driver's coming the opposite direction. Now, typically, the driver who makes the left-hand turn is at fault in these incidents. However, if you can get an expert to download the event data recorder of the other vehicle, and it shows that they were speeding, you may be able to get some fault assigned to the other vehicle. And in a state like Florida, if you're badly injured, even if the other driver's 30% or 40 or 50 or 60% at fault, you can get 30 to 60% of the value of your case, which if you're badly injured, that can be huge. Another factor that affects how much money you may get for a car accident settlement is the amount of your medical bills. In a state like Florida, that's a no fault state. In most car accident cases, the injured person has much smaller medical bills. This is because their own no-fault insurance, even if they've done nothing wrong to cause the accident, pays up to $10,000 of medical bills and lost wages. Now, just focusing on medical bills for a second, in Florida, the injured person can only recover their out-of-pocket medical bills and any amounts paid by Medicaid, Medicare, or their health insurance coverage. I've heard of other states having laws where the injured person is allowed to recover the total billed amount of their medical charges. That is not the case in Florida. Another huge factor that determines how much money you may get for a car accident settlement is whether there is insurance available. Without insurance available, even if you have a huge injury and the other side did something terribly wrong in a car accident, you may wind up getting zero. This is because you need someone to have the money to pay for your injuries. This typically comes in the form of the other driver having insurance coverage. Generally speaking, people who do not have bodily injury liability coverage, they don't have the money to pay a judgment if you win at trial against them. So in a perfect world, if you had the option of choosing to get hit by someone who has a $50,000 policy and you have a broken wrist, the other driver's 100% at fault, or option two, you have a broken wrist and this time you need surgery and the other driver was drunk and weaving and blew a red light and hit you but has no auto insurance coverage, situation number one is better. Some people have a hard time understanding that if the at-fault driver has no insurance coverage, you may wind up with no money in your case. But in a state like Florida, that's the case. Florida doesn't have some type of state fund where if you're injured and the other driver doesn't have enough insurance to pay you for your injuries, that state fund kicks in and pays for your injuries. Let me give you an example of how insurance coverage is so important. I represented a client, we'll call him Raphael. He was a passenger in a car that essentially T-boned another vehicle. Raphael had a plate and screws put into his wrist. The car he was in had $25,000 of bodily injury coverage and the other car had $10,000 of bodily injury coverage. I was able to get both insurance companies, State Farm and Allstate, to pay the combined $35,000 and the other driver paid me $2,500 out of her own pocket. Now in this case, I settled for a fraction of what I've settled for in many other broken wrist cases with surgery. In another case, I settled a broken wrist with surgery case for $200,000. You can see the difference between this. We're talking over $150,000 difference between one client who unfortunately had bad luck and was hit by someone with the $10,000 dollar policy and another case where my client was hit by someone who had a million dollar policy. Now the county that your car accident was in has an effect on the ultimate amount of money that you may get. In some counties, jurors are more liberal and award more money for pain and suffering. In other counties, jurors are more conservative and award less for pain and suffering. If we look at a map of Florida, you can see the red areas where typically verdicts are smaller. 
In the blue areas, typically verdicts are larger. Basically, in the large metropolitan cities in the state of Florida, the verdicts are higher. So insurance companies know this and their settlement offers are typically higher, all things equal. Now, that being said, for car accident settlement purposes, any day of the week, the severity of your injury, how badly you're injured, the amount of insurance coverage and the liability facts are much, much more important than the area where the crash happened in. However, you do need to factor in where the crash happened in because if it happened in a metropolitan city, let's say the case is worth $100,000, in a very conservative venue, that same case may be only worth $70,000. If you're getting value out of this video, hit that like button. Another factor that determines how much money you may get for a car accident settlement is when were your first complaints of pain. If you're claiming that you have a rotator cuff tear, but your first complaint was a month after the crash, even though you went to the hospital on the day or the day after the crash or a few days after the crash, but your first complaint was not until a month after for shoulder pain, expect the insurance company to give you a tough fight on paying for your rotator cuff tear. Now, it's not just rotator cuff tears that are affected by this. The same is true if you have a herniated disc. The same is true if you have a tear in another body part. You're likely going to have a much easier time for settlement purposes if there was a complaint of pain at your first medical visit shortly after the crash. This is particularly true if you're dealing with an insurance company like Progressive, Allstate, or State Farm who have tough reputations for arguing that if your first complaint of a particular body part pain was a month or so or longer after the accident, that it's not related to the crash. Ultimately, you can take your case to trial and let a jury decide, but the goal for your case is to get fair value for your injury. So if you have complaints in a particular body part, tell the doctor sooner rather than later. You can also ask the doctor as you are getting treatment to review the medical records and you can confirm that the doctor is writing down that you have complaints of pain in the medical records. What the doctor writes down in your medical records and bills is extremely important for car accident settlement purposes. Earlier I said that an MRI can be very important in a car accident case. An MRI has the ability, if it reveals that you have, let's say, two tears, for example, to take a case from $20,000 to $70,000. That happened in a car accident case of mine. My client will call Mike was injured when he was an occupant of a lift vehicle. He ended up having an MRI that shows the tear in his wrist and a tear in his ankle. Now, my client did not have surgery in this accident. Geico paid $25,000, its bodily injury limits, and Lyft's underinsured motorist insurer paid $45,000, bringing the total settlement to $70,000. Now, had my client never had an MRI, he likely would have received about a $20,000 settlement or so. So you can see how an MRI can potentially, if it reveals tears, add significant value. In that case, we were dealing with a better underinsured motorist insurance company, Zurich, who pays much better typically than Progressive, State Farm, Geico, and Allstate. Whether or not you take an ambulance to the hospital is very important for car accident settlement purposes. This doesn't mean that if you don't take an ambulance, you don't have a great case. In fact, I've settled cases for six figures or more where my client did not take an ambulance to the hospital. But that being said, an ambulance can significantly add value to the case. Insurance companies feel that your injuries are more serious and that they are related to the accident if you took an ambulance to the hospital. Now, if you don't take an ambulance to the hospital, the second best thing is that you go to the hospital the same day of the crash. I represented an Uber driver who was hit when another vehicle made a left-hand turn in front of him. My client did not take an ambulance to the hospital. However, just a few hours later, he went to the hospital and I settled his case for $260,000, which was paid by the other vehicle's insurance company, CNA. Now, even though my client did not take an ambulance to the hospital, his case had significant value, primarily because of two things. One, he had a very large hospital bill of around $99,000. He spent six days at the hospital and he had a compression fracture of his lamina, which is in the spine. The 911 call can have effect on the amount of money that you may get for a car accident settlement. So get the 911 call early. Request it as soon as possible because it may disappear. Many counties or cities destroy the 911 calls after just a few months. In the 911 call, there's a chance that you may hear the other driver admitting fault. They may say, I made a mistake. I wasn't paying attention or something like that. If the other driver admits fault in the 911 call, that can be used against them at trial. Now in Florida, typically vehicle one who is listed on the crash report is the vehicle that the police officer believes was at fault. Now in Florida, the police report is not admissible into evidence. That means the jury can never hear about who received the ticket in the car accident. 
Another factor that may affect how much money you may get for a car accident settlement is whether the other driver was drunk or on a cell phone at the time of the crash. This is because if the other driver was drunk or drugged or on a cell phone, you can threaten to sue for punitive damages and perhaps sue for punitive damages. You have a much better chance at getting awarded more money for punitive damages if the individual who caused your injury is a high net worth individual or a company worth a lot of money. This is because punitive damages are directly tied into the net worth of the person who hit you or the company. Now, while punitive damages can add a lot of value to a case, I still think that a larger factor than punitive damages is the extent of how badly you're injured. So I think a case is better if someone has a broken leg and a rod in it and the other driver was just ordinarily at fault, meaning he ran a red light or wasn't paying attention, I think that's a better case than just having lower back pain or neck pain and another driver was drunk or drugged or talking on a cell phone and hit you. Some insurance companies pay a lot less for the same injuries as others. For example, Allstate, State Farm, and Progressive typically are very cheap when paying for pain and suffering. On the other hand, insurance companies like Nationwide, Hartford, Travelers, USAA have a much better reputation for giving out payouts for pain and suffering. Lost wages is another factor that determines how much money you may get for a car accident settlement. So in Florida, in most car accidents, the injured party goes through their own no-fault insurance, then that pays for 60% of lost wages up to $10,000 and the 40% of your lost wages that was not paid by your own no-fault insurance, you can recover it from the party that was at fault. Your ability to negotiate with the insurance company may have a huge effect on your settlement. Insurance adjusters are seasoned negotiators. Just because they say final offer, it doesn't mean that it's their final offer. Insurance adjusters can be very convincing. You need to have experience negotiating hundreds upon hundreds of cases to understand how insurance adjusters negotiate and how they think. You need to understand when your offer and demand is too high, when the insurance company is not paying reasonable value for your injuries. You need to be able to look at past jury verdicts, which you typically need to subscribe to a service to get access to these. And you really need to have hundreds of settlements to get a good understanding of how much car accident cases are worth. Without that, the insurance company can be really convincing and you can leave hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of dollars on the table. Watch these videos here so you learn how to settle your case for the most amount of money in the shortest time possible. Subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a thing. Thank you for watching and have a great day.